Let's explore how to use the Center for New Testament Textual Studies New Testament Apparatus. First you'll need to display a New Testament verse in the Browse window since the CNTTS Apparatus is for New Testament Manuscripts. So let's display John 1 118 in the Browse window. I'll click within the command line and then type JOH space 1 space 18 and hit enter. Now in the analysis window I'll need to display the verse tab. In the verse tab use the drop down list to find the CNTTS apparatus. And then hold your mouse cursor over a verse in the browse window. The CNTTS apparatus displays a critical apparatus for the current New Testament verse you're working on in the browse window. Now let's see what's found here in the apparatus. At the top of the entry for John 1.18, we have the base text for the apparatus, our verse in the Nestle Elan 27 text. And directly below it are four sections that identify certain types of variants for this verse. We have lacunae, manuscripts that have a missing or damaged part of the manuscript for this verse, significant variants, insignificant variants, and singular or solely Latin readings, that is only Latin evidence readings. Notice that there is a blue hyperlink preceding each variant in these categories. You can click on these to navigate to that variant further down on the page in the verse tab. So when I click on one of these hyperlinks, I navigate to the apparatus for that particular section. In the lacunae section, words that are missing or damaged are indicated by brackets. If you wish to return back to the top of the page, click on the left arrow button up in the left corner of the verse tab header. You can click on any of the hyperlinks to view the apparatus for each particular variant. Now let's explore what our apparatus tells us. I'm going to choose the significant variant Monogenes Theos and click on the hyperlink for it. The reading as it appears in the base text is highlighted in a bold blue in the full base text and appears as our first variant in the list of variants below the full verse. Following each variant, you'll see up to three codes showing in these locations. They identify the types of variants and indicate specific types of readings. We identify them in the documentation as three different columns. Let's take a look at these columns. The first column with a reddish color identifies the variation type and displays a code indicating the type of variant being treated here. You can click on this code and the verse tab will display a key that indicates what the code or symbol means. We see here that S indicates a significant variation unit. To return to the apparatus, click on the left arrow navigation button in the upper left. In the second column for monogenes theos, we have a zero here. When we click on it, we find that zero means the notation for the base text or the UBS fourth edition. Again, click on the arrow button in the upper left to return back to our apparatus. Notice that for monogenes theos here, there is no code for the third column on this variation unit, but we will address the third column shortly. You may also notice that there are no manuscript numbers for this particular reading, as the reading of monogenes theos is not extant in an existing manuscript with the full form of theos written out. However, in the second variation unit, we see that monogenes theos is extant in P66, in Aleph, B, and C, with those manuscripts using the nomina sacra, the abbreviation for theos. Thus, the reading in the base text is extant with an abbreviation. In this particular variation unit, notice that there is a code for the second and third columns. There is a dash for the first column, and if we click on the number one for the second column, 
We find that the number 1 means a reading that represents the base text with only minor differences. For example, something like Nomina Sacra, which we observed in this particular variation unit. Let's go back to our apparatus with the left arrow button. And let's take a look at the third column that we have not seen yet. The third column has codes that relate to the nature of the variants or of certain aspects of the variant readings, such as Nomina Sacra, the movable new, orthographic changes, and so forth. We have here an X, and let's click on it. And thus we find that X is the code for nomina sacra, a shortened form of a sacred word, title, name has been used, which we've seen in our variation unit. Again, let's return to our apparatus. Notice that following the three columns of codes for each variation unit, there are manuscript numbers for the manuscripts that have the reading of each particular variation unit. Thus we find that our textual variants appear here in blue. And next to the three columns for each variant unit, the numbers of the manuscripts for that particular reading are listed. Each manuscript can be clicked on to allow you to view more information on that manuscript, such as the date, current location, and classification according to the Aland categories indicated by Kurt Aland and Barbara Aland in the text of the New Testament, an introduction to the critical editions and the theory and practice of modern textual criticism. Let's return to our apparatus again. So you can click on any of these manuscript numbers to find out more information about that manuscript. You'll also notice that there is a double right arrow following the list of manuscripts for each of the variation units. If you click on the double arrows, a table will display indicating the century the manuscript comes from and the Aland category if the editors of the CNTTS indicated an Aland category for that manuscript. Each of the Roman numerals for the categories can be clicked on to find out just what that category means. And again, use that upper left arrow to return to your apparatus. So these tables can be helpful to see the date and category for each manuscript. You can also highlight information here from the CNTTS apparatus. Right click on it, choose copy, and paste it to another location like the BibleWorks editor. I'll right click and paste. And the variation units and tables are pasted. The Expand button allows you to view the CNTTS apparatus in a floating window. And this can be helpful not only to view the apparatus, but to read the introductory information as well. or to see a key for the manuscripts. The CNTTS apparatus also has a search tool. Click on the search button here. You can use the search fields to search for particular types of variants. For example, let's say we wish to search for significant variants in the manuscript of Sinaiticus. In the VU slash MV type field, I'll click the down arrow and choose S for significant. And in the manuscript field, I'll click on the down arrow 
and use the scroll bar until I find Synaticus. Click on it so it's highlighted, then click another location within the search window, and I'm ready to conduct my search. I do so by clicking here, Search, and now I can view the results of my search by clicking on the arrow buttons under Search Results. This button here allows me to open the CNTTS apparatus to that particular variation unit. You can also search for particular words that may be a part of the variant text. So I'll modify my search for significant variants in Synaticus by typing Theos here. Then click on Search and click the arrow buttons to move through your search results. You can also open the CNTTS apparatus from Resources, Textual Criticism, and CNTTS NT apparatus. Or to open its search window, click on Resources, Text Criticism, and CNTTS NT Apparatus Search.